Hey guys, it's been a while uh, and I guess it's time for a new video. I've been in Cusco for two weeks now, which is incredible. Again, time has passed very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to tell you about what I've been up to the last two weeks and I think the tone quality, the audio quality on my last video wasn't very good, so sorry for that. I'm gonna try to make it better this time. Yeah, so how's Cusco? Um, I arrived in Cusco by plane. Almost everything went well. <laughs> I just missed my last collection, connection flight in Lima, but that wasn't too big of a problem. I could catch a plane one hour later, so all went well. I got a airport pickup um, from my school, which brought me to my host family here in Cusco two weeks ago. Um, and all of that went completely smoothly from um, top. My host parents here are called Maria and David. They also have two sons, which I see um, from time to time, but all of them are actually working all the time. So I got a lot of time on my own as well. Um, however, most of the time I'm also out of the house. But all in all, my, my host family here is very nice. They provide me with um, lunch and breakfast every day, except I'm up there. Um, and I have my own room. We share a bathroom, but everything's fine. And yeah, I feel, I feel comfortable here. And I felt comfortable for the last two weeks as well. My new school is, of course, completely different to the school in San Diego, however, it's very, very nice as well. And my classmates are wonderful as well. I spent a lot of time with my classmates, also outside of class, in the afternoons, in the evenings, on the weekends, um, almost every day, which is pretty, pretty nice. Um, the mode of teaching is a bit different here. In San Diego, I learned a lot of grammar and did exercises and books, and here it's actually just talking, talking, doing oral exercises, giving small presentations, um, yeah, talking about different topics, which is, which is nice because I've learned the Spanish grammar more or less in San Diego, um, but I'm happy that I had that because without that I would really be struggling, I think. But I'm... Every day I'm improving, of course, and I'm more confident speaking Spanish right now, so I feel kind of comfortable speaking in day-to-day in -day life. Of course, you don't understand everything, but um, I survive with my Spanish around here. This is my room for the next weeks. First day in Cusco. I just got off the bus to my school. The traffic is crazy and it's interesting. You just hop on the bus, you think it's right, and then pay them one soul when you get off. That's like 25 cents. Um, yeah, now I have to walk to the school, which is gonna take me like five to 10 minutes. And this, this is my school children. Cusco is also a very, very nice city. It's the historical capital of America because it was the capital of the Incas. And you can see that in the historic center you have like the colonial buildings from the Spanish who invaded here, but also you see some, yeah, some references to, to the Inca time. Of course they had a lot of museums here. I visited a few. Um, it's quite interesting, art museums or historical museums, um, chocolate museums, Pisco museums, um, that's pretty nice. And also just walking through the streets, walking through different parts of the city, um, that's quite nice. And the historic center is, is very picturesque. However, I live a bit outside of the city, about five kilometers from the center and from my school. I take the bus every day, which also is an experience. Um, it's always very full and I'm way too large, too tall for, for the buses. Um, so that's fun, but they're really cheap. They just cost one soul per ride, which is like 25 cents in Europe. And so very, very affordable. <laughs>
First Saturday here, my first weekend, I did a tour through the Sacred Valley, um, the Sacred Valley of the Incas. It was a one-day tour and we got to see a lot of historical sites, um, which were very impressive, um, which were very nice to see. And it's just incredible to think how old they are and how well preserved they are. That's, that's really nice. <laughs> Maras and Morai. One of them again is a historical site, um, which is the circular site that is also kind of famous, I guess. And the other one is a salt mine where they gain all the salt that they export here, which was very interesting to see and again very impressive to think that the Incas built this and, and used it as well. Um, incredible. And I also visited, <laughs> at the moment we have a lot of festivities here, so I also had Thursday off last week and this week I'm going to have Friday off because it's a public holiday. So we used the day off to visit Laguna Humantay, that's a sacred laguna on more or less 4,200 meters above sea level. By the way, Cusco is on 3,300 meters. That also <laughs> took some time to get used to, um, but I'm accustomed right now. So right now I, f I feel <laughs> I feel comfortable walking as fast as, as let's say in Germany as well. Um, but you do get out of breath more quickly. Um, however, Laguna Humantay, which was very nice, you had to take a quite a long bus ride because it's far away, um, and then you had to hike for two hours up to the Laguna. But it was so nice. Um, it's this laguna on 4,200 meters with a glacier on top and surrounded by sacred mountains which are called Apus in the local language here, which is called Quechua. That's what people speak here uh, besides Spanish.
course was Machu Picchu. I did that last weekend. Um, it was a two-day tour on Saturday. Nate, a classmate and me, took a bus um, to a small town called Hydroelectrica and that bus ride took almost seven hours. We then walked for two hours to Aguas Calientes, which is the town beneath Machu Picchu. Um, it's a very touristy town, but, but was nice, picturesque, <laughs> has some nice restaurants. And we slept there for one night, and on the next day we drove up to Machu Picchu, had a small tour there, and also spent some time alone there, and it was so magnificent. Um, we were there at 7 o'clock, so for sunrise, more or less, um, the sun just rose above the mountain tops. And at that time, there weren't too many people, not as many as I would have expected. Uh, we both enjoyed it so much, it was really incredible. And I think that really was the highlight so far. I really, really enjoyed that. Took way too many pictures and photos, but... Um, yeah, the bus ride, the bus ride there was, was terrible and back was even worse, <laughs> but it was definitely worth it. Um, the th funny thing is you can either take a train, which is twice the price of the bus, so we chose the bus, um, but the road there is not really a road, it's just kind of a track <laughs> um, with a slope going down right next to it, so kind of dangerous. Um, and just almost half of the way is just a construction site, which is pretty interesting that such a touristy place doesn't have a proper road um, to get there. Yeah, now I'm in my last week of classes. Um, as I said, Friday is holiday, where we're gonna visit the Rainbow Mountain, or here, Montaña de Siete Colores. So, yeah, it's supposed to be a mountain that has seven different colors. <laughs> I'm gonna be really excited for that. I'm actually gonna visit that with um, girls I know from San Diego. <laughs> I live with in San Diego. They're right here in Cusco right now. So that should be fun. <laughs> um, and after that, on Saturday night, I'm gonna start traveling through the south of Peru because I have one week off before I start classes again um, in Lima. Yeah, and we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> I'll definitely make more pictures and videos of that and probably make make a new video in two or three weeks in Lima. On my way to Machu Picchu, stop on the road. Walking to Agua Calientes. What do you think, Nate? Eh? Traditional experience. <laughs>